This anime is one of the most exciting and exciting anime of April. The characters of this anime are full of fantasy monsters and it stands out from the rest with its extremely detailed characterization. Hell's Paradise is different in that the hero faces a life and death test right from the start. The village chief casts the cow rift and the flame trial in an attempt to wipe him out. However the hero only gently moves his feet and pulls the two cows back steadily. After the flame trial he is unharmed and still strikes a condescending pose. His strength is rooted in the fact that as a child he witnessed the village headman killing his parents. Since then he has been on a mission for the mayor and has become the strongest man in the village. The mayor recognizes him and gives him his daughter in marriage. However this woman is not his type as she always forces him to take off his shoes which are covered in dirt and to pray to the gods before every meal. It wasn't until she comforted him that his heart began to change. Despite the fact that the brand on his face could not be removed he faced life every day with a happy heart. However after completing his mission he returns home and realizes that his wife is not really happy. For the sake of his wife's happiness he asks the village chief to let them go. However the village chief only agrees on the surface but secretly sets up a trap and captures painted eyebrow Maru and his wife and sends them to the court for execution. When he thought he couldn't be killed he was surprised to meet the heroine this time. The heroine is Sakiri of the Asiman beheading family. The girl Sashay of the Asiman family of beheaders is a woman who has been forced to be killed by the police. However the heroine suddenly dodged behind him and fortunately painted eyebrow Maru reacted quickly to avoid the fatal slash. He angrily counterattacks grabbing the soldier's sword. In the collision the sword is taken away from her. Sakiri taunts painted eyeball Maru as he presses him down. Eventually painted Maru escapes by breaking his bonds. Then Sakiri takes out a part in order that the government will pardon their crimes if they travel to the other side of the island to obtain the immortality pill. However the Shikigami refuses to let them go, and he has no choice but to cast the Jutsu Fire Monk. And with that he wipes out all the soldiers. The next thing that awaits them is the legendary other side. The scene switches and many death row inmates are gathered in one place. But instead of being beheaded they are about to be pardoned for life by the government. All the condemned prisoners are surprised but there is no such thing as a pie in the sky. The government gave a condition to send them to an island called the other side where there is an immortality flower. Whoever can retrieve it the government decides to pardon him for the rest of his life. Next a man covered in flowers is pushed out by the soldiers. At this the torturers were uncharacteristically frightened. The sergeant also explains how he was the only survivor of the many people who came to the island and were returned. But that night he developed lumps all over his body. The next day those lumps blossomed. Now he has been reduced to a vegetable who is worse than dead. The crowd protested and some even got up to leave. But a seaman who could not let him go so easily decapitated him with a single slash. The officials also hastened to add that each of their behavior would be monitored by a seaman. If they ever find anything out of the ordinary, they will immediately behead him. And they will all travel with the criminals to the other side as watchers. The people were calmed down. But things are not always that simple. The lords of the government told the sergeants to reduce the number of criminals because their ships to the other side could not accommodate too many people. Just as everyone was wondering how to reduce the number of people the criminal in the back had already moved. He strangled one with both hands straight away. And with such behavior the petty officers didn't stop it. But when he turned his head he was stoned to death. Because the sergeants meant exactly the same thing so that they could kill each other to reduce the number of people only they could not untie the handcuffs that were tied to their hands. Then next the whole field of criminals instantly fought. The weaker ones were all brutally eliminated and the ones left on the field were all partially strong. There were people who were smashed and used as swords giants who were invulnerable to swords and guns and even the strongest painted Maru was forced to join the fight. After a bloody massacre they all have the qualifications to step onto the ship. They include the king of thieves Yazwa Hang Bei, the Kenshin Ryu Mingus Shia Tetsai, the murderous Nenbutsu Horiyobo, the painted eyeball Maru who escaped from Shinobu Hollow, and a few of the strongest survivors. They also finally got on the ship to the other side this time. Everyone is being supervised by the chopper in his behavioral moves. But they obviously didn't know how dangerous the island they were about to land on was. No sooner had they landed on the island than some of the beheaders were brutally murdered by criminals. Not only that there are even beheaders who are attracted by the beautiful appearance of the criminals and all the hierarchical relationships have completely changed. Because here only by strength they can continue to survive. Even the strongest ninja painted eyebrow Maru has only just landed on the island when he was attacked directly by the hammer. On the opposite side was a tall strong violent criminal and with a decapitated man beside him he didn't stop him. Because that was the unspoken rule when they got on the island. But at this point Sashay apparently didn't realize that while for painted Maru this level of attack would do nothing for him. But as he was about to counterattack, Sakiri still forced him to tie up his hand ropes. But even in this state painted eyeball Maru utilized his nimble stance and kicked his sword out piercing his opponent's chest. The opponent fell straight down. But something magical happened he actually stood up again. It turned out that he had sewn armor onto every inch of his body in order to be able to withstand the attack. While he seemed to be like a god or a demon at this point he didn't expect to be easily defeated by painted eyebrow Maru. Just as he was about to leave the decapitated man across from him drew his sword. But instead of intending to do it for revenge he beheaded the criminal. 
Afterwards he was ready to fight his way back home and by the way he also reminded the two of them that it wouldn't be easy to get back from here alive. Before he got to the island he saw that some of the criminals had already been killed by their accomplices. There were also quite a few decapitators all brutally killed by the criminals. And there will be more tough ninjas coming here in a few days soon. So trying to survive here and capture the immortality pill is simply an impossible task. The painted Maru woke up directly after hearing his words. In order to return to his wife he had to get the fountainhead pill as soon as possible. So he decided to take care of Sakiri first who was affecting his speed. In the face of the hollow painted Maru at this time Sashay was naturally no match for him and was quickly suppressed on the ground. In her eyes at this time the painted Maru is so horrible. This time Sashay who has always defied fate also completely despaired. But the sword was slow to come down. Because the faith of Hanabimaru's wife stopped him from his empty behavior. At this point Hanabimaru also finally came to his senses. But if he hadn't been ruthless and stayed so weak he might not have been able to go back and see his wife alive at all. While their stance remains the same at this moment Sashay understands what Painted Maru is going through because of it. But what they didn't expect was that this mysterious island would be so weird that there would be this kind of monster that they had never seen before. The two brothers on the other side of the island are also experiencing the plague of this creature. The younger brother at this moment is feeling a little desperate. It turns out that this is not the island of the immortals, but a hell a hell that specializes in bringing down the sins of the sinners. The brother was enraged he jumped up and slashed all the monsters present. This side was already killing like crazy while the other side was just getting started. The fish-shaped monster swung a heavy punch and Painted Maru took the opportunity to kick Painted Maru in the head, but the monster immediately used its other arms to slam Painted Maru into the ground. In the face of the tough monster Painted Eyebrow Maru remembers the fifth rule of ninjutsu taught to him by the village chief if you can't beat it run. However he hesitated as he saw his teammate next to him. The monster took the opportunity to bind his body. He couldn't move and had to let the monster slam him into the ground again. Himimaru tried to rush out of here with Sashay but in the next second he realized that they were already surrounded by monsters. When it came down to it painted eyebrow Maru no longer hid his strength and directly cast a jutsu to attack the monster. Artemis Maru is in killing mode but behind him Sashay is in danger and is sneak attacked by a monster. Sakiri is bitten by a centipede and at this point Sakiri is unable to escape. Himimaru senses Sashay's predicament but he hesitates. Because he couldn't have the slightest distraction if he wanted to finish killing the monsters in front of him. So he continued his action running quickly making a big jump and slashing the monster's arm saving Sashay. The empty painted Maru was no longer empty but what was the point because the monster hadn't been killed yet. Seeing that he was about to fall. Thankfully a samurai drew his sword and came to the rescue of none other than his fan. The woman didn't say much and came up with a magical operation. The woman seduced painted Maru while tempting him to team up with her. But before he could finish his sentence he was subdued to the ground by painted Maru as he knew better than anyone what the female ninja was capable of. Then the woman got serious and formally invited Painted Eyeball Maru to team up with them, and Painted Eyeball Maru agreed. But at this moment Sashay's condition began to deteriorate his vision became more and more blurred and he finally collapsed on the ground. Sash collapses to the ground but instead of being abandoned by Painted Maru, she allows Fatty Decapitator to carry her on his back and start a new journey. And meanwhile after seeing the ferocity of the monsters on the island the group that chose to escape had an equally treacherous experience. The men led the group to leave knowing that staying on the island would be a sure death sentence but they were surprised to encounter a ghost ship. The ship was filled with monsters of unknown origin and the water was swarming with powerful water monsters. The ship is filled with monsters of unknown origin and the water is swarming with powerful water monsters with countless tentacles coming out of the water. To survive the two must fight. At this moment he couldn't help but remember what happened a long time ago. At that time he had thought of kindly bringing this group of men to their village to rest. However he didn't realize that the opposite side was the soldiers who were after their clan which led to all of them being mercilessly killed. Even he the only survivor was sent to a cold prison. Just when he thought his life was over a man came along who changed his fate. The man from a seaman who was too reluctant to kill the innocent boy gave him the only hope of survival. That is to travel to the island to get the immortality pill. But now this scene is really scary. A decapitated man covered in flowers appeared in front of them and that was the first person who was planning to leave the island. A seaman's decapitator Kishiyama. Just as they stepped forward to check out the situation the body was picked up by a handful of people. Kishiyama who had a smile on his face was instantly cut in half by the monster. The two of them were directly shocked and it was only then that they realized their own current situation. And the only way to escape now is to board the boat. Even though the boys were scared it was the only thing they could do. Eventually the two of them make it out. But as fate would have it they were back on the original island. But after this adventure they knew the basic structure of the environment. There are countless giant octopuses spreading out in two wings to encircle the battle no one can escape from here. Just as they are about to take a bath the man discovers the incredible secret. The boy in front of him is actually a real girl and she is now completely naked in front of him. On the other side the three decapitators were gathered together. The gruff man orders Sashay to leave the island but Sashay is very adamant about her samurai spirit. She wasn't going to be a deserter out of fear. 
However, since the man across from her is her senior brother, she who has always been unruly has no choice but to bow her head and kneel on the ground hoping to be forgiven by her senior brother. But the man not only do not forgive but also talk about laughter gripped to her shoulder a knife directly to the Sakiri cut. But the brute didn't get his way. Sashay was so fast that she took the knife away from him. The man was so angry that he wanted to teach Sasaki a lesson, but then a giant suddenly appeared behind him. Although he is nine meters tall he has the mind of a three-year-old baby. And he didn't have an easy childhood either, as he killed his parents by gently pushing a rock. However not only his parents but also other villagers in the village were accidentally killed by his rock. And what's even more absurd is that he grew to a huge size of nine meters eight in only two and a half years, but carries a child's heart of love and playfulness. He slapped the samurai. The samurai was sent flying hundreds of meters away, and with his last remaining breath he still told Sasaki to run. But Sasaki didn't do that. Just as the giant was about to strike painted Maru arrived. Yumimaru kicked the giant but after all he didn't learn from the shogun, and the blow didn't do any damage to the giant. Seeing the situation Hanamimura tries to call for help but the helpers just want to watch. He is forced to fight the giant on his own. As the giant's speed and strength are so fierce he can only unleash his jutsu from a distance. A jutsu Raikushika shot out. The powerful impact was able to penetrate even the trees but the giant was unharmed. For a moment even painted Maru was in a daze. He didn't know what jutsu to be effective against the giant in front of him. But to his surprise Sakiri stepped up to the plate this time and fought alongside him. The two began a coordinated battle. Painted Maru held the giant at bay giving Sashay a chance to get to the back and chop off his leg. However the giant's leg is actually rock solid after this slash. This time Sashay was not blamed for the failure. Sakiri also slowly adjusted his mind eliminating all superfluous emotions. And painted Maru got serious. The flames even scared away the two people watching from the side. After a set of coherent output although there was little damage his purpose had been accomplished. Painted eyebrow Maru was directly seriously injured. And at the same time the surrounding flames began to spread and the forest instantly burned to the ground. The giant inhaled a large amount of smoke causing him to agonize unable to support the lack of oxygen and eventually falling to his knees. And Sakiri came to his side ending the giant's miserable life with a single slash. Then they also hurriedly fled the place. The two ran and caught up with their watching teammates as well. But what they saw next was the existence that made everyone incredibly panicked. They actually saw a village in the mist could there really be a land of the immortals in existence. Meanwhile on the other side of the room Yazwa Hangbei and the others walked through the forest and found a wonderful wonderful scene. The scene switches and painted Maru and the gang discover the secret of the day the immortality pill does exist and learn the coordinates of the pill. Their island is divided into three areas getting more and more dangerous from the outside to the inside. And in the center of the place called Palai there is the elixir of immortality they are looking for. But at first they didn't realize it except that painted eyebrow Maru noticed it and there was a girl behind them looking at them. At the drop of a hat he went after the girl and grabbed her. But in the next second the giant wooden man blocked the way covering the girl's safe escape. He went after her and kicked the wooden man in front of the female ninja. Sasaki who was relieved to see the girl's face followed after her. The female ninja also showed her jutsu for the first time. Since she didn't want to be seen she also specifically took off the fat man's glasses. Just by taking a sip of the unique nectar a very large amount of sweat instantly appeared on her body. On the other side the girl frantically fled but how could she outrun painted eyebrow Maru? Seeing that painted eyebrow Maru was about to catch her with just a slight bend she dropped painted eyebrow Maru hard on the ground. At this point Sakiri went after her and started to persuade the girl to stop. As expected the girl stopped walking. But things obviously weren't that simple as the girl built up her strength and threw a punch at Sashay. Luckily the punch was blocked in time by painted Maru. The small punch contained so much power that even Hanabimura was hurt by it. This also directly enraged Hanabimura he pulled up the tree vine behind him and tied up the girl with one hand. This ferocious aura instantly scared the girl to tears. This shocked Sasami Maru but Sasami was still gentle and showed her motherly aura as a woman. On the other hand the female ninja and the others have defeated Kijin and found painted Maru. And the Kitsune spoke up. For the sake of the little girl's safety he was forced to tell the hero the whole secret of their island. There is a medicine for immortality that exists on the island and that thing which they call Gaul only grows in the center of Panlai. But it's not easy to get it there are very powerful celestial immortals there, and no one has been able to get out of Panlai alive for thousands of years so far. He is the highest ranking person on the island and is in charge of Zhao Shin who punishes all sinners especially those who come to the island. Moreover the punished human beings do not simply die they are reborn as beautiful flowers and are able to escape from their sins and the mundane world to achieve eternal happiness. Saying this he ripped off his wrist proving the truth the broken arm instantly grew a new body. He had also been favored a little by a chance. This time the information allowed painted Maru and the others to target him as well. And his dream of returning to his wife had finally come to fruition so now he couldn't waste a single second he had to find the immortality pill as soon as possible. However what all of them didn't know was that the so-called elixir was also something that had been cultivated by turning their humans into flowers to be used as fodder. On the other side the samurai and the girl turning her head are being chased by Vesta. 
They were desperately trying to escape, but it didn't work at all. Vesta directly blocked the way with a displacement, and with just one blow that powerful force sent the samurai flying. He wasn't going to let the girl go either but the girl managed to dodge Vesta's attack with her agility. Watching Vesta's gradual approach the samurai who fell to the ground was so upset that he pulled out his sword and cut right through Vesta's eyeballs. But this kind of damage equals zero and Vesta quickly recovers. The samurai must take the girl with him to escape and he uses his superior swordsmanship to chop off the monster's limbs taking advantage of the opportunity to make a quick getaway. The two of them were desperately fleeing through the forest seeing no catching up figure behind them but suddenly appeared beside him. The two were doubly nervous as Vesta stopped them directly. At that moment a flying sword instantly severed the head of the tree Vesta was linked to and Vesta was incapacitated. The visitor is one a seaman who is also Narai's master. He called on the two men to quickly escape. The man's name was a seaman Cheyenne, and he was blind but he was able to run around the forest as usual. They escaped for some distance a time like this his master still knocked Narai'sa on the head. Because he still wasn't fast enough with his sword just now. This behavior also made Narai'sa feel very relieved. After all the master was here the safety index was directly full. Nariza introduced them to each other but a seaman Cheyenne aimed his sword at the girl. Because their mission as a seaman is to supervise criminals he doesn't know why Nariza is harboring this criminal. And Nariza was very kind he knew that the girl wasn't guilty it was only because of the times of the world that made her a criminal that's why he wanted to escape from here with the girl. But before he could finish his sentence Vesta came after him. Master rushed to carry the two to safety and Nariza just wanted to thank Master but his Master's throat had already been slashed. The Vesta was extremely fast. This time Nariza can only reluctantly go up to fight knowing that the fight cannot be but the master of this state obviously he cannot retreat again he made his best sword skills. But in the next second Nariza received a fatal blow but how could he fall down? Even if he had to endure the severe pain he had to fight for everything and guard his companion's safety. He swung a full force punch at Vesta's face and added a few more furious punches and that wasn't enough either. Just as he stepped forward to frantically unleash the discontent in his heart Vesta simply raised his hands flat and Point Seat's body was pierced through he fought with all his last strength to try and get Master and the others to escape. That way he could have no worries and fight with all his might to stop Vesta. In moments like this his mind also interpreted gratitude to his Master remembering the scene he had been in. But he was still too weak after all. On the other hand Painted Maru who was traveling to Panlai was also facing a huge trouble. To Vesta who has infinite regeneration no matter what kind of damage the opponent suffers Vesta can immediately recover from the injuries. Anamaru is forced to unleash a jutsu and Vesta's face is immediately burned by flames. Despite what looks like a collapse Vesta doesn't die but fights back in the form of a black charcoal man. Hayabimaru never believed in gods even if you can regenerate indefinitely I won't let you get away with it. Drawing Maru definitely didn't realize that at the moment he's the only being on the entire island who has defeated a god. But Vesta laughed eerily and then flowers grew all over his body countless flowers piled up to form a giant bud with two monsters with human faces inside. Just that release of lightning alone made Painted Maru feel great pain but it wasn't enough to make him fall. Taking advantage of the gap between his opponent's attacks he quickly threw out a kick at the monsters but it was blocked. The incoming lightning bolt sent him flying into the distance and he still didn't give up. The intense pain made him realize his limit at this point he had no power to fight back he could only let the monster slaughter him. The monster strangled his neck and a large amount of blood gushed out. But it wasn't from Painted Maru it was from the two monsters because he remembered the ninja's law that the village had taught him in case of a near-death situation when exhausting the flames of life give the enemy the maximum damage and finally die. And the village chief had already trained them long ago. Instinct would guide Painted Maru and the others in the case of a near-death situation they would subconsciously die with their opponents independent of their own consciousness. The fire burned off the monster's tentacles but at this point he was completely physically exhausted. Everything from the past surfaced in Painted Maru's eyes. At that moment a hand was placed on his back. The little girl may came to his aid. Facing the monster's lightning strike she held up a shield with both hands. The monster let out a roaring sound then his body started to dissolve and Vesta came back to life. On the other hand Sashay was anxious because of Painted Maris traveling alone. Though she was the decapitator of Painted Maru she still wanted Painted Maru to live. The group begins to travel to Horai in search of Shinyumaru. The tree man also reveals the secret of the heavenly fairy. Originally the island was inhabited by humans and they survived for about 1000 years on average. But due to the coming of the first god they would eventually die as their bodies gradually turned to wood even at their old age. His daughter was the first human in the family to turn into wood. Then that god split into seven parts all of them with the same voice and appearance just with different personalities and duties which means that the seven of them ruled the island all year round. On the other side the seven gods appeared together they talked about everything and laughed. But the only thing that made them unhappy was Vesta's dereliction of duty. Not only did he let a few of them loose on the beach but he was also forced to unleash a ghostly necromancy by the humans beating him at the gate. He had knocked Vesta's head off in one move and as a god it was only natural that he wouldn't die easily. But his regeneration slowed down significantly and he could only grow a withered old face. The purple hair interrupts his taunting stating that even though they are family only he himself can reprimand his own people. 
At the same time Purple Hair questions him if the humans he encountered last time have been taken care of. To this Yellow Hair is unimpressed bluntly stating that he has already thrown them into the well and that they have probably turned into flowers by now. But what he doesn't know is that Hangza Abrai has already escaped from the cave with his brother on his back. On the other side Zimao says that no matter who comes their goal will not change and that is to rule this lonely island and guard the immortality pill. He poured a cup of strange potion for each person and all of them drank a cup full. The potion was extremely potent, and after Vesta drank it his condition instantly returned to its peak. And on the other side the rescued painted Maru also woke up he had already confirmed that the other party was not a god but a monster then there must be a way to defeat it. Since he can't do it by himself then he should call Sakiri and Fatty and the others. Before he could finish his thought the human sword dragon and his decapitator came along beside him. But even though painted Maru was in this state he wasn't the least bit intimidated. Without saying a word the two across from him used their consciousness to pass each other. This surprised Kenshiro such a weak painted eyebrow Maru was actually able to limit his defense. But he was worried that he couldn't find an opponent however painted eyebrow Maru directly knelt in place he wanted to invite the other two to team up together. Jian Long hesitated a little then slashed down although it was only a fake action, but he could see the sincerity of painted eyebrow Maru when they learned of the existence of the heavenly immortals both of them were taken aback. It actually had infinite regeneration what kind of monster was that? They can't even be burned by a broken neck by flames or by burning. Painted Eyebrow Maru informed them of the information about the Heavenly Immortals and Jianlong agreed to form a team very readily as he wasn't interested in any pardons or immortality pills. The only thing he was fascinated with was practicing his sword art. And Yellow Hair who was the decapitator was very interested in undead things. The three of them thus reached an agreement to work together. At that moment the unconscious little girl woke up. Painted Maru was a bit surprised that the girl who was obviously a little girl just a few moments ago had grown up to be a teenage girl. Hearing the other party call out to his brother painted eyebrows Maru was very excited she is actually not mute. He quickly asked Mei what she knew but it didn't seem very polite. He calmed down and apologized to her. He wanted to know why the girl had the power she did and how she was able to defeat Tenshin. Mei tells him the reason for the chi. And at the same time on the other side the tree man told Sakiri and the others about how all the Tenshin have an ability called chi. However to my great shock Narizu's master uses this ability. Because of his blindness he could only tell things by sensing the air currents around him. For example he can tell the height and weight of a child and has a high ponytail. Suddenly a monster appeared behind him, but he didn't panic in the slightest. The monster was easily knocked down by all of them. While he didn't agree to be the little girl's master he allowed the girl to learn from him on the side and made a point to show her. On the other hand painted Maru and the others also encountered a large number of monsters. Kajiri easily killed a large number of monsters with just a single draw of his sword. This battle power is simply terrifying. On the other hand Yasuo Hangbei didn't die he forcefully carried his brother on his back and escaped from the huge pit by stepping on the body that was covered in flowers. But the heavenly fairy didn't give them a chance to catch their breath and immediately sent Taoist priests to exterminate them. The man was not convinced a flying kick the Taoist priest easily dodged backhanded him with a heavy punch. But Yasuo is not so simple he directly twisted the right hand of the Taoist priest alive. The first thing you need to know is that you're not going to be able to get your hands on the right hand but you're going to be able to get your hands on the right hand. The Taoist sees this and directly invites a large group of monsters to try and show him how blissful it is to be transformed into a Dan. The younger brother wanted to go up and help but was asked to clear the other obstacles and the Taoist priest was just left to deal with himself. The Taoist knew that the man in front of him was strong but he was already tired as the Taoist also used what is known as Ki. Yasuo Hangman quickly launched an attack but it was ineffective. On the contrary the Taoist priest utilized the so-called Ki and knocked out Yasuo Hang Bei with a single blow. But the next moment he was lying on the ground like a zombie rolled over directly to the Taoist priest played a nine in white bone claw. The man's wounds healed so quickly and the gas in his body is getting stronger and stronger. At the same time Yasuo Hangbei realizes that this chi is the very same joint that defeated the heavenly immortal. In the blink of an eye the Taoist priest unleashed another wave of chi bombs blinding Yasuo Hangbei's right eye followed by a rush of heavy punches. But Yasuo Hangbei let his hands break by merely blocking with both hands. But soon enough with his chi he repaired his hands. Then the Taoist priest realized that the chi in Yasuo Haibai's body had further strengthened and began a verbal attack. But Yasuo gave him no chance to fight back and with his realized ki he punched out the Taoist. Then the younger brother who was watching the battle noticed that the wound where the older brother's wound was healing was expanding and the marks were somewhat like the vines of a plant. On the other hand the powerful painted Maru and Jianlong although they could easily take care of these monsters. But it seemed to Mei that the chi on the two had been in the middle of being strong and powerful. At this rate they were never able to sense the chi. At this time Centipede did seize the opportunity to aim a kick at Jianlong and snatched Mei up with his Dao robe and said they have been looking for Lord Mei. And he sincerely invites Mei to go back with them because they need Mai's help. This scene of conversation also made Painted Maru fall into deep thought. But before he could finish thinking Mai's crying expression instantly made him stand in front of the Taoist priest. Seeing that Painted Eyebrows Maru didn't give the slightest bit of face the two Taoist priests decided to strike together to finish off the party. They summoned countless centipedes and butterflies. 
and seeing this sky full of monsters Jian Long remembered that he got his hand from these things so where could he sink his teeth into them and rush forward with his sword. But he was knocked back by a blast of air. Seeing this painted Maru hurriedly urged him not to please move and to watch for opportunities. Just as the two of them were chatting Centipede fell back on Painted Eyebrow Maru and summoned Centipede to surround Painted Eyebrow Maru. On the other hand Butterfly Taoists also kicked Kenshiro. The two struggled a bit and finally got out of the tangle. The Painted Eyebrow Maru asked the Taoist priest why the Taoist priest is chasing after Mei and won't let go. The Taoist actually also patiently explains that Mei is a rare talent for practicing Taoism and they need Mai's help in order to complete the dual cultivation so as to go further. The Taoist priest also patiently explains that Mei is a rare talent in the practice of Taoism, and they need Mai's help to complete the dual cultivation so as to go further. However Lian still gave Mei two choices one is to let her wander, and eventually die in the wilderness, and the other is to assist in the cultivation of these Taoist priests, and also left scars on Mai's body as a mark. And at this point painted eyebrows Maru imagined instantly angry to the extreme he simply cannot stand this behavior. The Taoist priest saw this and attacked together which made it difficult for painted eyebrow Maru who had used his fire escape to move. After being instructed by Yuemi Hajimaru realizes the correct way to use ki and defeats the Taoist priests. On the other hand Sasaki and his group also entered the Pumlai under the guidance of the tree man. But as soon as the door opens they encounter the so-called peony fairy who is also the most perverted man on this island of Pumlai. Small Kong sees that the situation is not right and wants to sneak away. But the peony fairy caught her in a mere flash and informed the crowd that all the souls on the island are not empty and what not are all fabricated by the patriarchs to maintain order. This island is the laboratory of life and the crowd is just a test subject used to take it on. Even the elixir that everyone came for was a fabrication. Just as Sasaki hears this he also thinks of the painted pill what would he do without the immortality pill. Just as the celestial fairy was talking about trying to transform the people properly Kuga made a substitution not shooting out 28 flying daggers to stab the celestial fairy. After that a knife from the sky cuts off Tian Shin's head. Thinking it's all over Kong pulls sachet and prepares to leave. But it's not that simple the revived Tencent controlling the zombies attacked Kong again but Kong dodged the attack. The woman who is using the same kind of weapon as herself wants to take her back to practice the art of room with her. But the fat man refused and pulled out a knife and cut off the hands and feet of the Tian Xian. And Xiao Zheng also attacked Tian Xian after having a small drink. The two of them launched another fierce attack on the revived heavenly immortal. However it didn't have much effect. At this point on the other side Sashay also learns about the weaknesses of the heavenly fairy from the tree man and quickly runs over to the heavenly fairy wanting to test it out. The tree man tells Sashay that by hitting the Dantian he can completely eliminate the Sky Fairy. But Sakiri's chi is still too weak to completely kill the Sky Fairy. But in a flash Sasaki raises his ki by using breathing techniques and draws his sword to slash at the Tensin. The blow finally cuts Tensin's face and doesn't respawn. Soon the four of them wrestle together. But who knew that Tensin would use the air to create footholds in the air and perform a transformation of the yin and yang bodies summoning a shower of seven colored swords that battered the three men. Just when Sashay wants to give up Kong offers to try again. He points out that Sashay is the Tensin's weakness. So Kong uses his jutsu to pull Tensin out of the air while Fatty stabs Tensin through the heart from behind and takes control. Sakiri draws his sword and runs from a distance finally cutting off the Tensin with a single slash. After killing the Tensin Fatty is also talking to Sashay that he originally wanted to be a painter since he was a kid but he was forced to accept his current job because of his birth. And it was Kong's free spiritedness that reminded him of himself. When he was talking Xiao Gang noticed that Tian Xian was covered with flowers. In a flash a bouquet of flowers stab at Kong like a sword. But at that moment the fat man dodged in front of Xiao Jing. And just like that fatty's body was covered with flowers. Looking at the re-blooming flower sachet was paralyzed with fear should we fight it again. But the girls who had just finished the battle had no strength to continue fighting. A sword shadow appears in the nick of time and saves them. It turns out that Xuan has arrived in time. But even though he's very powerful he can't get close to Tian Xian's body. They put a layer of liquid on their bodies licking it up one by one but it's enough to prevent the other side's flower toxin. Even though Xuan was severely injured he had no thoughts of giving up because he had to avenge his disciple Dianza. The aura that emanates from him at this moment would decimate even a god coming here. Sakichi told everyone that the opponent's weakness was in the Dantian. But this heavenly immortal has two bodies. Sakiri forces a slash to control the celestial immortal. At this point Xuan has come to the back of the heavenly fairy and focuses his entire body on his sword. But he didn't slash down not because he was blind but because he sensed something unusual. Also at this time the fat man whose body was covered in flowers exerted all his strength to shout out the embryo its weakness was in the embryo. Since the other party is a plant its dantian location is also in the center of the petals. With full concentration Xuan struggled to slash down. Numerous writhing human heads appeared inside. This is the first time a human on the island has killed a heavenly immortal. What was thought to be impossible they finally did. However there were six other heavenly immortals besides him. Not only are they looking for each other but the two Yatso hangmen are also approaching Horai. Sakiri is worried about painted Mara's safety. But before he can finish his sentence Shuyuan can tell that she is in love. 
Then Kong reveals the shocking secret that there may not be an immortality pill on this island. Though Sashay has heard from Painted Maru that the head of their village is the one who has the body that doesn't die and doesn't age. Kuga refuted Sashay as she already knew the secret a small illusion created by the head of their village in order to get the people to submit to her. And speaking of illusions maybe Painted Maru's wife doesn't exist and that's just one of their means of manipulating Painted Maru. It's just a little bit scary. On the other hand Painted Eyebrow Maru wakes up from his coma and he actually has amnesia unable to remember anything. All he knows is who he is and that's the head of the Awakage village. And the figure that vaguely appeared which made him very puzzled. Kagome didn't see the abnormality of the talking plum finish. She realized that the chi of the painted Lady Maris brain was missing a corner of it. It was like a part of the soul was missing. This is the end of the first season of Hell's Music. What other interesting stories will happen in the future let's look forward to the next season's update. Remember to like and subscribe we'll see you next time.